The life cycle of a plant. What is a life cycle? A life cycle is a chain of events that an organism goes through during its life. These events are the growth stages or developmental stages of the organism. In this video, we will be discussing the sexual reproductive cycle of angiosperms. First stage, seed. The life cycle of a flowering plant starts with a seed. A seed is a fertilized and mature ovule. It consists of a miniature plant, called an embryo, in a protective coat. In most plant species, the seed also contains food reserves for the embryo, in the nutritive tissues of the endosperm, the perisperm, or the cotyledons. The food reserves support the embryo during dormancy, and the juvenile plant during germination and initial growth. Viable seeds are living entities, waiting for the right conditions to germinate. Most seeds go through a period of dormancy, when germination is delayed due to unfavorable conditions. Sometimes seeds will not germinate even under favorable conditions, and will need special treatment, like scarification or stratification. Many seeds are important food sources for humans and animals. For example, wheat, rice, corn, legumes, nuts, mustard, coffee, cocoa, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, poppy seeds, sesame seeds, and so on. In horticulture, seeds are used for propagation. They are mostly small, portable, inexpensive to purchase, or can be collected from existing plants. Seeds need to be properly stored to preserve the viability of the embryo. They also need to be properly sown, to aid germination. Second stage, juvenile, vegetative stage. The juvenile stage starts with germination. Seeds need the proper temperature, moisture, air, and light conditions to germinate. When a seed starts to germinate, the protective coat breaks open, and the first root and shoot emerge. The root grows down into the soil to take up water and nutrients. It also begins to anchor the plant in the soil. The shoot starts to grow towards the light. This process is fueled by the energy reserves of the seed. The germinating seed has two days to turn into a seedling, capable of photosynthesis, before exhausting its reserves. Once photosynthesis starts, the plant can produce its own food, and fuel a rapid vegetative development. The young plant is now creating more roots, stems, and leaves. It is putting all its energy into growth, that will enable it to reach maturity and to compete for light. Seedlings need the right temperature, moisture, air, and ample light to grow. Compared with the robustness of seeds, seedlings are fragile and vulnerable. Their defenses are weak against diseases like damping off, or environmental stresses, like excesses in temperature. Seedlings in the wild are also at risk from grazing animals. Tree seedlings grow into saplings. Saplings have flexible trunks and smoother bark than mature trees. The flexibility of tree saplings helps them bend in strong winds, and thus avoid serious damage. The juvenile stage is the sexually immature stage of a plant. 
It is a non-sexual and non-reproductive stage. There are no flowers and no fruits at this stage. It is the period when plant sizes increase the most. The length of the juvenile phase can vary from a few days in certain herbaceous species, to 40 years in some tree species. Sometimes a juvenile plant's leaf shapes are different from the adult leaf shapes. For example, the juvenile leaves of Hedera helix are three-lobed. The adult leaves are more oval. Juvenile eucalyptus leaves are round. But the adult leaves are narrow. Some conifers also change their leaf forms in adult stage. For example, the juvenile leaves of Juniperus chinensis are needle-like, while adult leaves are scale-like. Leaf retention is another characteristic of juvenility. For example, Fargus sylvatica hedges are often pruned back to the vegetative growth to keep their foliage in winter. Vegetative propagation, for example from stem cuttings, is more rapid and more successful from juvenile material. Juvenile material produces adventitious roots more easily because of the growth hormones present in the tissues. Coppicing and polluting shrubs and trees can encourage vigorous young growth in certain species. Coppicing is a pruning technique where a tree or shrub is cut to near ground level. Species that respond well to coppicing include Cornus alba, Corallus oveana and Rustifina. Polluting is pruning stems to a higher point on a trunk. Species that respond well to polluting include Salix, Lariodendron, and Eucalyptus. Some vegetables, such as Daucus carota, are harvested in the juvenile stage. The taproots of carrots are actually the food reserves of the biennial plant to be used for fueling the adult stage of the development the following year. If we kept carrots in the ground until spring, the carrot plant would flower and set seed, and the root would become inedible. When we mow the lawn, we are keeping grass in its juvenile stage, preventing flowering. Stage 3, Adult, Reproductive Stage During the adult stage of a plant, vegetative growth slows down. When a plant reaches this stage, it becomes sexually mature, and capable of sexual reproduction. The plant produces flowers, and if pollination and fertilization occur, the plant will produce fruits and seeds. The seeds are then dispersed, and the life cycle is ready to begin again with the new seed. In horticulture, the adult stage is usually the most significant stage of plants. This is when we appreciate flowers and fruit for their decorative value, their scent, and their ability to attract insects and other wildlife into our garden. This is when we can harvest edible fruits, like apples or courgettes. This is when seeds can be collected to be stored and used next year. Stage 4, Senescence Plant senescence is a process of aging, when physiological changes occur in a plant, or a plant organ, that ultimately result in tissue death. Senescence can affect the whole plant, or only parts of a plant. Leaf senescence is an example of the latter. 
During leaf senescence, leaves turn yellow and fall from trees, making it possible for the tree to recycle the nutrients contained in them. In perennial plants, leaf fall is associated with approaching winter dormancy. If the whole plant declines, for example due to environmental stress or a pathogenic attack, growth and reproduction cease, and metabolic processes slow down. Most often plant decline is due to the aging process, whereby cells degenerate because of the accumulation of breakdown products. In horticulture, plant senescence can have different consequences. It can be a welcome change. For example, when the leaves of rust typhina turn red, it can produce a spectacular autumn display. The colorful stems of Cornus alba and Cornus sanguinea are especially decorative in the winter. Acer grissium, or paperbark maple, has attractive peeling bark, that is most visible in the winter. Many plants spread their seeds after the plant has started to decline. The senescent seed pods of Papaya somniferum are ready to crack open and spread their seeds. The senescent flower heads of Dipsicus falonum can be decorative, as well as provide food for wildlife. Senescent autumn leaves and branches can provide a hiding and hibernating place for animals. However, senescent plant material can also harbor pests and diseases. Fallen leaves can damage a lawn when left there for a long period, and leaves on steps and footpaths can create a slipping hazard. Senescent flower heads can be unsightly in the border, but deadheading can delay senescence and encourage the growth of new flowers and fruits. The energy from the senescent leaves of daffodils and tulips will go into the bulb for winter perennation, and should not be removed until completely dead. During post-harvest storage, fruit quality gradually deteriorates due to fruit senescence. Fruits are alive and perform metabolic functions, they respire and transpire. Proper storage conditions, for example optimum storage temperature, can slow down the metabolic activities of fruit, and thus extend the storage period. Ancient trees have smaller canopies and wide trunks, which are likely to be hollow. Stage 5, Death A plant is dead when metabolic and cellular activities cease. All living processes stop, and the plant starts to decay. Dead trees are still useful for their environment. For example, they provide habitats for insects and fungi. They contribute to the biodiversity of the environment. Soil organisms, like earthworms and fungi, feed on dead plant matter helping to decompose the nutrients accumulated over the plant's life. Some of the carbon from the plant's dead body may be locked away into the soil long term, reducing the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. Dead plant material can be turned into nutritious compost or leaf mold for the soil. It can be used as mulch, to protect plants during winter. On the other hand, dead trees can be a health and safety hazard, as the wood becomes brittle and susceptible to breakage. Old tree stumps can harbor insect pests and diseases, such as the deadly honey fungus, which might spread to healthy plants in the garden. The death of the individual plant doesn't mean the death of the species. Seeds have been left behind that can start the life cycle again.